Does someone get the last word now? Um, and I know we're, we're over a bit, so we are gonna we're out, are still gonna break and we'll go to the comment period, um, uh, even though we're we're kind of nearing the nine o'clock hour. Um, I, so I, I do have a pile of questions here, but they, they fall into uh, just a couple of themes here. Um, one has to do with the, the public health assessment report that we I talked about earlier, and how can we uh, produce this report when the study is still underway, the investigation is still underway. Um, that's because you know it was a major segment. So this, the report that we're going to be talking about, that, that we're going to be releasing, is really just going to be on that first segment. Um, to try to, um, you know, not delay reporting out because if we, if we delay reporting out until the investigation um, is, is over, at this point we don't have a, an end date for the investigation being over. So it's important to get that information out and um, as readily as, as, as quickly as possible. There's a question in here about the spring sampling um, and, you know, some concerns about uh, whether or not the, the uh, applications this spring were kind of designed to... Um, uh, make the study difficult. Um, the question here was, are we really trying to get around these problems? I guarantee you, I promise you. Um, we are working very hard with thinking, uh, trying to discern what our options are for getting those six questions that we posed answered. Um, so yes, uh, very much so. Um, there were a number of questions in here about um, illness, uh, sickness among people, uh, the questioners or people here in the community. Um, a lot of what's been talked about so far has been the toxicology of um, these chemicals. And um, that's, that's a, a very important first step uh, in understanding the science. The, the health consequences, the actual health outcomes, whether it's um, an immediate reaction to uh, an exposure or a longer term reaction to an exposure. The things that we worry about, people asked about cancer, people in this community have asked about things like um, uh, low birth weight or miscarriage, other kinds of health impacts. The, those, are, um, those are important areas of investigation. At this point, the way that we've scoped this investigation is holding off on the, answering those questions as yet. But uh, let me just describe to you some of what we will, when, when, when and if we get to that part of the investigation, what we're going to be dealing with um, is that <clears throat> health outcomes are captured in, um, uh, in different ways. We're, we're lucky in Oregon um, that we have a cancer registry, which is something called OSCAR, the Oregon State Cancer uh, Registry. And OSCAR has been in place since 1997. Um, so, uh, when we're looking at cancer rates in the community, um, we would compare what kinds of uh, rates of cancer, all cancers or a specific type of cancer, to um, what's in that registry. So the registry is good, but remember, it only goes back to 1997, so it, it does create some limitations for us, but we would look at, uh, we would use that cancer data, we'd use the cancer registry data to look at a community and see how it compares with the rest of Oregon or other communities in Oregon to see if we have a higher than expected rate of cancer. Um, we can do that also with, um, with some vital records like um, birth weights or um, miscarriage. That, that is also possible. Some things are less possible. You know, sometimes people worry about neurological illnesses like um, Parkinson's disease or um, um, MS. Those, the ability to look at a community and see if rates of those kinds of illnesses are much more difficult because we don't have ways of, of we don't have registries. We don't have an MS registry. We don't have a Parkinson's registry. And without that kind of information, it's very difficult to compare what's happening in one community um, and whether or not it's higher than than other communities. So. Follow the sign up list, right? So we've got a sign up list uh, for the public comment period. Uh, looks like we have 31 people who would like to provide us with some comment. I just want to um, uh, note that it's 9.25. We are going to stay here until, until everybody has made their way through their comments. But um, you're, you're, sharing the, you're sharing the clock. And uh, if I could just ask you to be 
as, um, say what you need to say, but be as succinct as possible. I think uh, we, we would uh, greatly want to hear what you have to say, and I, and I know that your, your fellow community members want to hear what you have to say, but we want to hear what everybody has to say. Uh, so, can I get you to uh, finish up your conversations and make your way back in here? That'd be great. Okay, uh, Jeff Newman, are you, are you ready to roll? I'm a long time resident here, and uh, I uh, have seen a few different things happen. And one of the, one of those is the basic dreams and the actual park families and all the highways. Can't hear you. That's concerning to me in the fact that we aren't controlling those uh, by any means with uh, mowing or picking them by hand. And uh, I feel that uh, spraying our roadsides is uh, a tool that we need to start using to get these things under control. So the best landowners that live adjacent to the highways and, and other landowners that don't care about the invasive weeds don't have to use so much herbicide and stuff to control ours. And the foresters are one of these people that do take that responsibility. And it's time the rest of us do too. And the Farm Forest Act is one of these things that, that allows us to do that. And uh, I think it's part of the state agency's time to stand up and start listening to the rest of us a little bit. And, and see that we don't want these weeds growing over our community. And we want clearing limits on our highways so that it's safer to drive and pass the bicyclists and avoid the water holes in the road. And we all live here too. Some of these people have moved into our country here. And they chose to speak for us at different things. And I think it's time for the rest of our community to start standing up and saying, hey, we, we're here too. We understand the problems. And we're willing to work with them. But there's got to be a little bit more control and a little bit more understanding. Thank you. Sending them, I think, for the next. Sorry. Excuse me. Justin. Sorry, Justin Workman, you're next. Hi, everybody. I want you to know that this is not an anti-logging movement. This is a pro-health movement. Yeah. This is about the children not being exposed anymore to these chemicals that there's so much uncertainty about. You can hear it from their voices that they don't know what these chemicals are doing to us. Especially when you combine them with all the other chemicals that aren't even being checked for out there. So, to not allow the data from my child to be added into this mix of stats and data, numbers, and percentages, is really quite alarming that you're going to exclude a kid that's under the age of six by one month from being part of the stats and statistics of what's going on out there. A little growing child who is so much more susceptible to these chemicals than anybody else, and you're going to deny that? 
it's time that we step up as a community together and understand that these are chemicals that are poisoning us at small doses. And if you guys can read between the lines here, you can see that they agree with what I'm saying right now. So I want you to know that I have respect for everybody in my community and that I've never lived in such a polarized, torn apart place before in my life. And that it's very, you want me to move out, that's fine. Okay, bud. And this is uh, very disheartening to see everybody so torn and that you don't believe your neighbor when they said they've been sickened by this stuff. And not one of you guys have come over to me as a neighbor, as a friend, to ask me what has gone on? What are my health issues? What do I know? What have I seen? What am I doing? No one. You just want to write stuff, send it out in the mail and try to discourage everybody from really the truth? I love you guys, and I want to be a part of this community, and we need some changes, and let's work together. Thank you. Audrey Moore. I kind of got you, if that's okay. I'm not trying to negate anybody, but this is kind of where the people are. Um, It was interesting trying to figure out what I wanted to say. Because to put it into context, um, I've been called a radical by some of the people that know some people in this room at least. Um, I'm emotional. I'm angry. I'm a lot of things. And you know what I am. And I'm not going to apologize for it because my husband and I moved to Oregon over 12 years ago. We retired thinking that we were retiring in a wonderful place where we could have the four seasons. It wouldn't be too heavy. I can give you all the reasons. We didn't know until last year, however, that I moved to a toxic soup bowl and that the helicopters that I've been seeing for years were actually dropping poisons into the neighborhood that I breathe the air and the creek that flows down my backyard that could potentially be contaminating my well. The elephant in this room, it's a phrase I know that's used a lot lately, but the real elephant in the room is that this is not new. Oregon has been poisoning its citizens for over 40 years. It used to be Agent Orange via helicopter in this state. All that's changed is the name of the chemical. And I'm not saying any of it's intentional. I I agree with the gentleman that said that we're not trying to stop logging. We're just trying to get some sanity back on the fact that these are dangerous chemicals. The studies lately, all the science I get, and I've connected to as much as I can. I can't keep up with it. The low doses are the danger. It's not the big doses anymore. That's what we used to think. We used to also think the earth was flat. <laughs> science, ha- science now is doing studies so fast on the volatility of these chemicals. They're considered ultra-hazardous for a reason. The principle that he was talking about in Europe when it comes to atrazine, this was after atrazine poisoned their water. You can't get it out when it gets in. We're doing this on, on tributaries that don't have fish in them. As long as there's no fish, it's okay to do a helicopter over the water. But guess what? That tributary feeds the fi- tributary that has the fish. And if it's not that one, it's the next one down because water flows downhill. When we do these clear cuts on the hills, all the mud comes down and gets into the water. Just watch after it rains. It's so obvious. So there's a lot we have to be concerned with. My biggest concern is the fact that we're talking about this like this investigation is it. Wow, look what's happened. Is it real? Is it valid? It's been going on in this state for many, many years. There's a history. Just look it up. Google atrazine, in fact. You're going to get 1,850,000 hits. Google glyphosate, because my valley, I'm from the Illinois Valley. My husband and I drive all this way to have this platform to speak to people about the fact that I did not plan on retiring in a toxic soup bowl. And the fact that I was at the park meeting, and many of you sitting here were there, and it just seems to be, oh, we're just, we can't possibly have more than one meeting a month, but the backlog is incredible, so we'll have to extend our hours a little bit so we can get to the people that have been waiting for years that have been exposed. And now we know something's wrong here, or we would not be having this meeting. You wouldn't have been spending all this time, effort, and money. Something's definitely wrong. I'm simply asking, get to the heart of it, because this needs to stop. Hey. Yeah. Um, 
because you all may think it's okay for your kids to be poisoned and to drink a Mazepure every day. But I do not think it's okay that my children have 2,4-D and atrazine in them. And I do not think it's okay that children should be allowed to drink water that is contaminated with a Mazepure. So I want to know what advice, I want advice from the agencies about what I'm supposed to do as a parent what am I supposed to tell my kids in 30 years when problems start creeping up? Oh, the state thought it was okay for you to be poisoned because it was just a little bit. How, how, how are we to be, how are you to ensure us that this investigation is fair how, how, and the integrity of it? How, can you answer any of those? <laughs> Anybody? Well, um... <laughs> So, uh, well, we were asked earlier about whether or not we were going to be responding to questions um, in the comment period, and the answer is, you know, if it's, it's posed a question you want, you want to answer, we'll, we'll do our best to answer the question, that, you know, the way that we were answering questions before. So, can you, can you open? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What I heard was two questions. In there. One is um, how, uh, how to uh, uh, provide some confidence to parents um, that if, they're, if their children are being exposed to concentrations of imazepine in their drinking water, um, what advice could we give you? Um, and the second question was about the integrity of the study. So uh, I, I guess I will turn the <coughs> mic, if I had one, over to the uh, <coughs> This one right here. It's on right here. Oh, okay, well, we can, I can grab it off the, uh, uh, to answer the question about the imazepine. And then, um, I guess... Not just imazepure, 2,4-D and atrazine, but do they have actually been tested for positive? Okay. Are we going to have a time limit on... I mean, because I'm like another 28, and I don't want to be here by myself when... I'll help you. Can I go after Can I... Okay. Well, I think maybe uh, we could uh, give a quick question, give a quick answer to, the, to these questions, and then... Why don't people come from... Come. Okay. All right. Uh, to answer the question about uh, lotus exposures, and then I'll So the first question about you know what to tell your kids when they've tested positive for D or just that there is and some there is some amazepure in the, 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 the drinking water. Um, I mean, I don't, these are questions that that, that that I struggle with. I mean, one of the things that we know from, from N. Haynes, the, the, the national study, is that these, uh, again, these, these it's very common to find chemicals in people. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't think that that's great. I, I think it would, obviously, of course, it'd be better not to have chemicals in people. Um, but I, I, I guess what I'm, the reason I'm saying that is to say you're not the only person who, who has, you're not the only community who, who has that question to struggle with. Um, um, I mean, most most people have um, have to struggle with that same question, and I I think a lot of people aren't aware of it. And um, uh, the toxicology that we know, um, like I say, it's, science is developing all the time. Um, uh, there, I, I still think it's true that the, the dose makes the poison. We don't know always how low the dose is that, that causes the problem. And not, not all doses are tested. So um, uh, based on what we know right now, there, there, there's not like, like an acute health risk. There's not, a, like not an imminent uh, disease that ought to occur. Um, it's, a tough, it's a tough question. I guess I, I, would, come, I would just come back. To, and, there really isn't a good answer for that. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just come. And I, and I knew that, by the way. I knew there was no good answer for you guys. You don't, you don't have to. Um, I, I wanted to answer that 
I'm an unsatisfactory answer. I, 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 no one can tell you what to say in trouble. That is your decision. And, and no one in this room, and I, I think I'm speaking for everyone, no one is saying that, no one is justifying anything. We're saying these are the facts. And we're trying to get more answers. But you did raise a question about how can you trust the integrity of the study. And all I can say is that, you know, I, I'm working with a big group of people. And I'm sure if you were to ask any one of them, they would tell you that I'm really stubborn and I can be really annoying. But I think, quite frankly, the same goes for everything else. I, I mean, I continue to be impressed with the integrity of the people that I work with. And they are committed to expending the resource, whatever resources they can cobble and scrape together and find the answers. And we've been very clear about what answers we're trying to get, you know, we specified the questions, these are the answers we want. And I will be perhaps disheartening and tell you that I can't promise anything beyond those answers. We're gonna get those answers, but I can't promise you what happens beyond them. Uh, but it all boils down to, we are committed to getting those answers. And I know you don't know me, and you don't know these people, but you just have to trust us that we're going to get those answers. So, um, for, the few, for the rest of you who are ready to comment, um, if you choose to ask the question, um, we will do our best to answer. If you choose to make a comment and leave it to a comment, I think we'll move through this process <coughs> faster. So I'm just gonna, with that said, uh, call Sally Gump. Come. 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 I just put it. I just put it. It's okay. Okay. I just want to. I just want to. I just want to talk to everybody because I was making observations through the through the whole meeting, and I've lived in the neighborhood for 40 years, and I've watched the population of frogs and salamanders go completely downhill. There's maybe one tenth as many as there were even 40 years ago, mm -hmm. and that that's where I stand. I mean, I stand on you know on my land where I've been 40 years. Yeah. But what I want to say is that we don't. There's no sides here. Because we all live on the earth, and this is a problem for all of us. You know, I don't care where we live, I don't care if we live in the city, the country, it's a problem for everybody. And also, but for me, listening to all that, pardon my French, bullshit science, it sounded like bullshit to me, and I was a science major, because the problem is now, and the problem is here, and the problem is people are getting sick and they're getting hurt, and you're talking about a scientific solution that's somewhere in the future. You know, we need something done now because we live here. And that, and, and I just kept getting more and more angry listening to it because we're here now and it's happening around us. That's the difference between the people who live here and the people that don't. Um, the other problem is, you know, and other people have mentioned this, we get sprayed from the roadside spray, we get sprayed from the agriculture, we get sprayed from the from the forestry, we get sprayed from the Christmas trees, we get, you know, we get sprayed from the private people that are just throwing stuff on, we don't know what the hell they're putting on it. And it comes from everywhere, and it all mixes in our water, in our soil, and in our, and what we drink, and what we eat, because we're growing our food on the soil. So, it's just, um, it's just overwhelming. And we've all got to work together to, to get it solved. Um, let's see, one more thing, I think. We're not just talking about human beings here. You know, we're talking about animals. We're talking about plants. We're talking about. I used to go get a sample out of a, a dish on my way to kindergarten. I was a kindergarten teacher, and I'd get clear water because I had an aquarium where we were raising tadpoles. I would get 50 different kinds of organisms. I mean, my kids would be fascinated by what was going on with all those organisms in the ditch. One day I go to get my clean water for the aquarium in my classroom. They sprayed herbicide the day before. Everything is dead. So I feel real passionate about it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Mark Mintz here. Uh, that was sick. That's crap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I just think we need to ban spraying uh, for the concerned citizens. Uh, who's really the concerned citizens, I guess? Um, you know, I mean, you guys are all being paid by forest companies or some kind of link about liability, worried about damn mazapir in the water or whatever. I don't know what to say. We just need to ban the crap and, I don't know. It just needs to stop. I mean... Lance. 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 So I'm number 28. Number 28. Okay. <laughs> I'm a relative newbie. <laughs> Whoa. Nice catch. <laughs> relative newbie to this community. I've been here not quite five years, but I moved down here from Portland, so I uh, feel much healthier than I did then. And I have a couple of things to say. One of them is that uh, as a human being on this earth, I resent anyone in this room questioning the integrity of anyone else on any level. Because we are all here. We're all here because we're concerned on one level or another. And to think that these people aren't doing the best that they can with the resources that they have really pisses me off. And um, so that's the first thing I have to say. The second thing I have to say is, yes, we are all in this together, and we are also are totally polarized because we have people attacking each other like we're at war with each other. And here we are talking about health, and we're tearing each other apart. So what's more stressful? Right. You know, what is more stressful? And I want to give you a little of my own personal history with pesticides because I had a landscaping business a number of years ago, 30 years, 20 years since I gave it up. I have sprayed a lot of pesticides. I did it when in my landscaping business. I did it when I worked with, uh, at Oregon Health Sciences University, the Metro Zoo, all the other places that I worked when I worked for other people. And I want to tell you that it may appear as though no progress is being made, that it may appear as though there's no concern about how pesticides affect pe people's health, but having been there a long time ago, I've seen the changes that have occurred in the laws, in the licensing, in the requirements for licensing, the number of chemicals that have been decreased because of their problems with human bodies and animal bodies, and that's not to justify any continued use, and it's not to justify that everything's just hunky-dory and let's just go on and do it. But I also know the issue from, from the side of trying to take care of things when you're one person and you've got a whole damn, you know, mile long area to weed and you can't possibly do it by hand. There is value to pesticides but there is also non-value to pesticides. But we're not looking at it that way, we're looking at it as a health concern and it is a health concern. Lots of things are health concerns. Alcohol is a health concern, tobacco is a health concern, Pot's a health concern. Not here. But that's our own choice. Yeah, it's these are our choice issues. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. Poisoning the I am trying. Let I am trying speech. to voice my opinion, and I'm not trying to justify any use of pesticides or anything else. I'm just saying we are on a course of making it better. It may not be the best, but there are a whole lot of instances in this world where we're not at the best. Or, for instance, uh, Bill Burris. My name is Bill Burris. I live in Deadwood. And I'd like to make several comments related to the scope of the future studies. Uh, I got something in the mail the other day that mentioned the right to farm. A number of it in Deadwood have small farms and gardens. Uh, most follow organic methods. And 
And we are concerned that if there is spraying and drift, that's going to affect our, our crops. Um, it puts us in an ethical bind. If we're trying to sell at farmers markets or we have a small CSA, I guess we have to be up front and say, we don't know if this is pesticide free or not. So I'd like the particular agriculture guy to take that in mind. Um, another issue is, uh, and probably the most important to me is, I have three small grandchildren. Uh, these are country girls. They don't stay in the house and play video games. They go outside and play. And in Deadwood, that means in the rain. And so I'm very concerned that if there is the drift, it's picked up by the rain and the fog, they're going to have that exposure. Um, and then the third concern, really more from listening to the study reports, the scope of the study. Uh, it seemed like the previous studies had been contaminated by outside variables that seemed like it could get a little more control if the EPA set up the spraying and did, did the spraying, you would know what, when, and where that spraying had occurred. So please take that in mind for future studies. Thank you. What was that? Ray Kane. Okay. I'm at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, we have uh, been uh, running timber and cattle uh, since the mid 70s. Uh, right out on J Road out here. Um, it is very important to take good care of the land, of the cattle, of ourselves. We rely on science to help us do that. We trust science. We do not trust emotional rhetoric that is what I consider just not truthful, is exaggerated. And so we're thankful that you guys are working and doing your testing keep up the good work, and we want to be safe, and we want everyone else to be, too. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, khaki first? Uh, I'm, I'm Bill, not Khaki. She had to go home. Uh, but I forgot one important point. She also said, be sure and thank the agency people that are here, and I do that. I know you have a somewhat thankless job, lots of different pressures. Um, I forgot to mention orchards. I have a five-acre chestnut orchard uh, within two miles of a most likely spray site. Uh, my neighbor just down the road, also within a couple miles of a spray site, is trying to get established an organic uh, apple orchard. And she has very great concerns over what the impact of this spray will be. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Roger Bell. Uh, I'm just a visitor observer over here, and uh, I'm originally from Michigan and in Southern California. And I bought a place up here in uh, outside Myrtle Point, 40 acres, in, in the coastal mountains in the, uh, the uh, temperate rainforest here. And uh, I, I met a lot of interesting people up here, and uh, the uh, and uh, I met an old man in a winery up there, out of remote there. And um, so uh, it was emphasized that Oregon, and I, I drove up here from Coos Bay uh, today, and I, I noticed how beautiful Oregon was there and how nice it was along the coast here. And when I come in a little bit, I see that some of the clear cuts here. But anyway, it was emphasized that uh, this was God's country, Oregon up here, where I live up there. And then I didn't, I realized uh, I had a well dug uh, all about a year and a half ago to gravity feed down some my, uh, some of my, I grow some organic food. And I wanted a, a gravity fed uh, water system. Instead of using the draws down, which the water comes down up from the timber company. So. And so uh, I, uh, I just, uh, uh, I found out about this community here by accident from a well company, from Christensen Well Company out of Coburg, 
uh, he did a neighbor's well, and so I, ha I, had, I had one put in too. And then uh, I, I, it was mentioned that uh, they had a problem with uh, chemical herbicides getting in the water, and uh, it mentioned triangular lake, so I, I, uh, I tracked it down a little bit, and uh, I found out what Dave Owen was doing, and uh, so uh, it kind of led me to here, and, uh, and uh, so I retired that time, so I got well, active in this, and uh, from what, I, what I've seen here, uh, uh, I think when I look back to some of the communities back in the 1900s, and, uh, where the people uh, didn't have much science, so the agriculture was more of an art, and people were healthy and strong, and didn't have the uh, degenerative diseases that we're faced with today in the chemical world that we're living in. So, uh, I, uh, so I, I just, uh, I just see the uh, what you're doing here is the uh, active thing, uh, which is a start. But I think the country itself needs a lot more than what you have here, and it's a start here. And uh, <coughs> the society demands uh, the cheap food from the uh, industrial agriculture, and and, uh, and we live in a chemical world with the wild age what we have, and people are in their convenience and. Uh, and it's more money oriented. So uh, I don't know what the answer is, but I think that the will of the people have to take things in their own hands if it's, uh, if, if it's uh, growing their own food and the younger generation has to do something. And the, uh, our, the immune system from the uh, younger people, if you look at the statistics back in um, we're 34th for, in the world as health-wise for, for younger people for 30 and under. We're, actually, Cuba is above us. And a, uh, Cyprus is the other one uh, below us. So, uh, and the, uh, but the, uh, and the, we have here the big powers of be with the money and everything. And like the Andrazine was uh, banned in Europe. Over there, the chemical companies have to uh, prove and provide the money and research to the, I don't know if it's the health government or the Euro European Union, and if they feel it's not right, they have to get more data, they can't hide or manipulate the data, and so they can, uh, and they've had a lot of problem with the groundwaters with Anderson, and it's a known fact, and uh, that's what's uh, dangerous, and uh, so uh, I just uh, hope all you people good luck, and uh, I just make some comments, that's all, thank you. here for over 35 years, been exposed to a lot of spraying. We use um, herbicides on uh, our property as a tool. It's not um, excessive. You use it as needed. Um, I was in the test study. Um, my test was a 0.41. Everything else was negative or too low to detect. I have no, I'm not concerned with this. I was concerned when it first came about because I didn't know the answer. So thank you for doing this study. I feel confident that you use protocols. I feel confident in the science. I do think that when there's a spray that we need to look at that again. But at this point, I'm, I'm comfortable with the results and I'm not concerned. The thing that does concern me is that a few vocal people have spoken for a large silent group. And in the course of doing that, um, we no longer have our roadside spray. We have a horrendous issue with knapweed. It's totally out of control. You cannot get that by clipping it. And we need to spray again. We need our roadsides just to be controlled. And pesticides need to be used as a tool. If someone abuses that, that's where the right to farm comes in. We have rights to use the tools and use them appropriately. If someone abuses that, 
The right to farm addresses that as well. But what we have is a circumstance where we have a lot of outside people that have moved into our community and now are telling us how to manage our farms. And I take issue with that. Thank you. Um, I've been here 42 years. I don't know if that gives me some kind of uh, uh, status or <laughs> older. It makes me a worse citizen of the area. And I've been uh, questioning herbicides and pesticides for 40 years. Um, we had a tansy problem up Deadwood at one point. In two years, with everybody, every time they took a walk, got up on the road, we pulled out the tansy. And for 15 years, there's been no tansy in Deadwood. Yeah. Why'd you do that? Yeah. <laughs> At one point, we had a couple of guys. Monsanto wanted to be very kind to us. And uh, they actually flew him out from New Jersey, uh, a chemist. Uh, and the salesman, the head salesman of the uh, Western United States. And we did our banter and we did our arguing and so on and so forth. Afterwards, the salesman, being a salesman, uh, comes up to me, puts his arm around me, says in my ear, you don't have to worry. It's the people in the factories. <laughs> you don't have to worry. It's the people in the factories who have to worry. So. Oh, a landmark study for me um, was one um, in about 1995, I think, and I read it in Scientific American. And um, they um, tested the herbicide, and to be honest, I don't know which one it was. Um, and they established a um, uh, minimum tolerance, or a maximum tolerance, like a minimum tolerance rate for Little frogs? Mm -hmm. Tadpoles. 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 Thank you. Uh, and uh, whatever it was, two parts per million or whatever. Um, and um, at some point, somebody has the bright idea. Let's put some predators in a tank right next to the tadpoles and see if that affects... Has anybody ever heard of that study? Yeah. There's yeah. a recent update to that up at the University uh, of Washington. This kind of explains much to me, uh, being a layman. Because the predators were there with the same amount of herbicide, the tadpoles died in much greater numbers. Why? Stress. Thank you and good luck to everybody. Dan Clamp. My name is Dan Clamp, and we're a, a resident out here. Uh, most of you folks have answered all the questions I had at this time. Well, and uh, I just want to thank you for being here and going through all this study. Thanks. Josh, John. Hi, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Um, I think we're all just.
genuinely concerned about what's going on. And the scope of things is just a little more immense than um, most of us can fathom. And uh, personally, I've been studying such things all my life. Um, I've read about 6,000 books so far in the field of medicine and science. And I just love to study this stuff. And there are so many statistics and data that go back to like the 1850s when I started getting compiled to the beginning of the Industrial Age. More into the microphone. Can you speak to the mic, please? Okay. The beginning of the Industrial Age when stuff started being compiled and we have data and statistics and you know everybody can probably throw some of those back and forth to each other. But just briefly, um, going back to 1850 and the reports by Huxley in the 1920s, cancer was found in about one out of a hundred people by the 20s. It was three out of a hundred by the 60s and 70s when Mr. Nixon declared war, not just on Vietnam and those undesirables, a war on cancer because it was mushrooming to like 30 out of a hundred. That's just about three out of a hundred. I mean, one out of three. And then now the scale is tipped. If most people don't know. It's one out of two people, 50 out of 100. And there are reasons for that. And this may be part of the reason. I think that's why we're all here. Everything has mushroomed so fast in the last few decades. Um, I grew up in the early 50s and 60s, the joy of um, you know, living with modern chemistry and everything that it could bring us. And stuff has happened so fast since then. There's so much information out there, pro and con. Um, we can all go on the internet now and, you know, looking up things, uh, certain buzzwords, you can find out what's going on. We're all familiar with genetically modified food crops, you know, Roundup Ready Corn and soybeans and BT, this and that. And um, many people, perhaps some of you aren't familiar with, and I had written down this question, but it wasn't address just because maybe the scope is maybe a little bit out of context, but trees now are transgenically modified, just like food crops. Um, the forest, forest crops are transgenically modified so that they grow um, with more resistance to the pesticides that are dumped on them, the herbicides, um, to kill. That's their purpose. Those pesticides and herbicides are designed to kill things that are undesirable to the harvesting of crops for money purposes, you know, whether it's food or timber or whatever. That's the motivation to produce everything bigger and faster, um, not just to feed the world. You know, people were doing fine even before all the chemistry. It's interesting that we're here in Grange Hall. You know, the Grangers started out when the land donation claims were given to them here back in the early 1800s and everybody got a certain amount of land to farm and all the small farmers and Grangers would meet you know, and help each other out. And they didn't have all the chemicals then, but they did well. You know, they ate well, they grew and prospered. You know, we're just trying to do that faster. And we think we can do it better through science and chemistry. Maybe in some respects we have made improvements, but, you know, um, it's a good book. I'm going to set it down, Genetic Roulette. It's all about, you know, GMOs and GE foods. Same applies to trees. And just to wind this up, um, you know, just to read something from something I printed off just this morning, since I knew I was coming here. Transgenic trees and trade problems on the horizon. And you can go on the internet and just type in transgene conifers, which is what the forest is, and see what they're using to uh, effect transgenic changes in the genetic structure, which will not only affect the trees as they are subjected to herbicide and pesticides, but they're also growing them in the trees now, in the food crops, and we're eating them. And when the trees pollinate, pollen drift goes for miles, and the pollens contain, you know, chemicals that the trees have sucked up through their roots, and uh, even on their foliage, you 
know, the nature of those fire and stuff. And then it gets enough. Yeah, we breathe it, we eat it, we drink it, and, you know, is it good for us? And personally, I don't think so. And so just to wind it up, and just with a simple question, because maybe some of you are familiar with my question was, um, if you know of, in this area, are there transgenic forest trees that have been planted in the last 20 years out here that might be, perhaps, it's not just the aerial spraying, but again, the pollen drift, with the chemicals that have been taken up and also not just the chemicals but the things they use to transduce and transfect the actual genetic structure they use bacteria and viruses and nanoparticles now which is a whole new science so my question is just uh, are those trees out there and on a personal level I just don't feel that um, Pesticides and herbicides and all the other sides are biocides that are designed to kill undesirable things that get in the way, you know, and some of the things that are even used on people. And um, it's unfortunate um, that we all have to deal with it now on whatever level. And I've been in the past more involved with you know, government circles and corporations. We're all sometimes in a rock and hard place, and you know what you do. You know, it's like you do what you can do, and I think that we're all doing something. And it's great that we're all just here having an exchange, and we can all take something from this and maybe work with it. Um, maybe eventually, see that, you know, cancer rates of one out of two people are not too good, and kind of realize that maybe all this big push for fast growth large fast growth means large fast profit is not the way to go. So thank you. I just Josh, so I think I think you know, think, I think maybe we could maybe I could ask you to um, uh, talk with our forestry people offline. We have fourteen people yet who haven't spoken sure. and I, I just wanna I'm, I'm, I'm aware of time and I'm gonna let people get I'm going to get on with Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Jeff Thiessen. Can you hear me? Yep. Hey, in my barn is a sign that uh, commemorates uh, the founding of the property we live on as of 1893. That's how long uh, my wife's family's lived on that piece of property. We do care about the land. We do care about what happens to the land. But integral part of that land is also the community that developed around the people that moved into the community. I've heard a number of people here indicate that uh, I, I've, I've been here 40 years. How come after 40 years I, I don't know your face? There's people here who said uh, indicated that no one had come and talked to them personally. I'm sorry, maybe we have a communication problem. Maybe you need to be involved in the community so that we know who you are. I, I haven't seen you down at Deadwood Community Center. Or, uh, uh, this is my time to comment, okay? All right. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm particularly in the Horton area, okay? I'll admit to that. But there's a Horton Triangle Lake area. So that was, that was my comment. Um, there was an individual who approached me tonight who, uh, for some reason, felt he was on the opposing side of, uh, of this issue tonight from where I am. And he extended a hand of friendship, and I accepted it. That's great. That's what we need. We need to communicate, and we need to continue this dialogue. Is there a problem? Statistically, I think there is a problem. Are these individuals uh, uh, honorable in trying to address that problem? I believe they are. I have heard indications here that these are the decision makers. These are not the decision makers. So to express anger or disappointment towards them is a waste of energy and a waste of emotion. I thank you for what you guys have done, and uh, that you care about what's happening, not only in this community, but other communities. I'll leave you with this last comment. Things are changing. Uh, in July 1, uh, the legislature has uh, passed an ordinance which will, in essence, make the use of all herbicides, pesticides, outlawed in public schools. As an individual 
who's responsible for the grounds of the school district, that creates some problems for them. Is it a good decision? Potentially. But it does create some issues. So there are things that are being changed. So your voice is being heard. We're not as polarized as you think we're polarized. And I think there's room for communication amongst us all. Very good. Thank you. And I knew I was next after him. Um, thank you for coming. Wow. You guys have just invested hugely. That's, mm -hmm. I really appreciate your investment in our community's concern. Thank you. And I just want to say, um, I did grow up here, and um, I am well. And I'm loving when I'm here, and um, I, I don't uh, think that it's a an assumed thing that everyone that lives out here is unwell. Um, I've raised healthy children, and I know. Thank you for your concern. Ken, uh, I moved here in 79. A lot has changed. Uh, most everything's been said tonight, but I want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, you've been beat up enough, and I just, I support what you're doing. Thank you. Um, Edward Whitmore. Edward, did you have the ghost? Edward? Edward. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, going once, Edward. Okay. If he shows back up, we get a, we'll get we'll a little yeah. pass. Okay. Uh, Valerie just left. Just left. Valerie just left. Okay. I think we're, I think we're giving, giving people some, um, we're getting tired. Uh, Judy Applegate. I just want to thank you for what you've done. Um, I trust the study, the results of your study, and I am not concerned that I've been poisoned and will continue to support the reasonable use of what is necessary to control the weeds. Thank you. Thank you.